A squad of knights led by the king decide to slay the dragon in its own lair. The king gives the order for the squad to form up. However, against the dragon's fiery breath, the knights didn't stand a chance. The remnants of the knights try to cover the king, but none of them survived in the end. Centuries later, in a far northern country, Floria and Elodie are gathering firewood. They are the daughters of a local lord. Due to severe cold weather, their people are suffering from hunger and disease. One day, a nun comes to their palace and says that Elodie will be suitable for her right. But in order to do so, Lord Bayford must give his permission. The letter said that the queen has chosen Elodie to marry the prince. Bayford wants the best for his daughter, but this marriage will also be able to help fill the treasury with gold. The two sisters move to the ship. A thick fog appears ahead. To prevent the ships from getting lost, dragon-shaped beacons are placed everywhere. Everyone is amazed at the abundance of farms and the splendor of the castle. Chamberlain takes Elodie to her private chambers. When everyone is left, she eats some grapes and goes out on the balcony with a beautiful view. She is noticed by another girl who is called by a maid and taken to her chambers. Late at night, Elodie goes out on the balcony again. In the distance, she sees the passage to the cave illuminated by a torch. A new day is dawning. Queen Isabel greets Elodie and shows her Prince Henry. Walking around the castle, Henry and Elodie find common ground. Elodie even manages to get the prince to take some horses and ride around the neighborhood. At this time, the queen ends up having a private chat with Lord Bayford. Lady Bayford notices that he looks very depressed, but he tries to assure her that all is well. The wedding will take place, and for a very good ransom. Meanwhile, Elodie asks Henry what exactly she saw in the mountains. The prince explains that an ancient ceremony is taking place there, one of three to be exact. They are very important to the kingdom. Meanwhile, Lady Bayford is trying to speak to the queen, but she makes it clear that she's not interested in conversation and even confuses Elodie's name. That's what I said. Good day, Lady Bayford. Because of which, Lady Bayford comes to her stepdaughter and calls the wedding a big mistake and argues that they may be kings. But that doesn't make them good people. She swears from the bottom of her heart that she wishes the best for her. But their conversation is interrupted by Lord Bayford and asks his wife to leave. I hope you know what you're doing. A new day is dawning. After the wedding, Elodie is taken to the carriage that is to take her to the temple for an ancient rite. She is amazed to see people with ghastly masks on their faces. Isabel, dressed in the costume of a sacred minister, gives Elodie a coin. Tonight, she will join a succession of women who helped create the kingdom. When their ancestors first claimed the land, they learned that a monster lived here. The king gathered soldiers, but their blades couldn't kill the monster and they all died except for the king. The monster offered him a deal, three daughters in exchange for the kingdom's prosperity. The king adored his daughters, but he had to take the deal. Isabel makes ritual cuts to Elodie and the prince and mixes their blood, assuring them that they now bear the burden of duty and honor. Afterward, she asks Elodie to throw a coin into the abyss. Henry takes Elodie in his arms, and though he is sorry, he must do his duty, throw the girl into the abyss. Tree roots cushion the fall, and she miraculously survives. Help me! Her screams are noticed by a dragon. Elodie tries to climb to the surface, but she fails. At the bottom of the chasm are scattered jewelry belonging to other victims. Flaming birds fly out of the cave. Elodie notices the dragon's huge paw and tries to escape, but the dragon quickly finds his victim and asks her name. Speak your name. Elodie. He explains that her people must pay him tribute. She is given away by the scent of royalty. Elodie realizes what they mixed the blood for. The dragon begins to spew flames. Elodie hides in a remote part of the cave. There lay the body of the girl she saw from her balcony. While fleeing, Elodie burns her foot. She makes a small lamp from a gift and goes to a dark part of the dungeon. Just as suddenly, she falls through a crevice and her lamp goes out. Through the pitch blackness, she manages to emerge into a glowing cave. After catching her breath, she jumps over the chasm, and her dress miraculously catches on a crack, so she manages to climb up. Elodie collects them and makes a lamp out of them. Suddenly, the ceiling is pierced by a dragon. Elodie manages to hide again. She finds a message left by the other girls. It turns out that slugs are magical, and they easily heal all wounds.
On one of the walls was drawn a map of the place. On it, Elodie finds the path that should lead her to salvation. There is only one problem. The exit is studded with sharp crystals. On the ground lay the crown of the woman Vi. With her help, Elodie clings to the crystals and slowly climbs out. The crystals turned out to be very strong and do not break under the girl's weight. The dragon found the girl. It frightened Elodie and she almost fell to the bottom, but the crown caught on the crystal. After that, Elodie rose to the surface. It seemed that there was a rescue exit ahead of her, but it turned out to be a cliff. But from here, she can clearly see the castle. After a while, she notices riders and tries to call for help. Her cries are interrupted by a dragon. He is about to kill the woman, but someone starts calling Elodie by name, and the dragon flies away. It turns out her father has hired a guide and is going to rescue his daughter. Elodie finds the dragon's eggs. They were destroyed by the first king. It is because of this that the dragon demands three sacrifices every year. Meanwhile, the dragon attacks Bayford's unit and kills two soldiers. The dragon asks Lord Bayford to call his daughter or he will die. Dragon tells him that the girl is still alive and hiding somewhere here. The Lord takes advantage of the moment to apologize to his daughter for trying to trade her life for the good of the people and asks her to hide. After these words, the dragon mortally wounds the man. As the dragon flies away, Elodie approaches her father. He explains from the last strength where their detachment left the ropes. She has a chance to save herself. The dragon notices the woman, but is not hit by the flames because of what Elodie manages to rise to the surface. The whole mountain is illuminated with bright flames. Isabel realizes that the girl has survived and orders her sister to be taken away. A new day comes. The mother manages to find Elodie. She learns that her sister has been taken and promises to rescue Floria. The prince tries to stand up for the girl. Isabel calls him a weakling and mixes blood herself. When Elodie arrives at the temple, all the people are gone. Hearing her sister's screams, she throws down the rope and climbs down. But the dragon has already caught its prey. This time, she jumps over the cliff with ease. Elodie studies the map and finds out where the dragon's lair is. She takes magical slugs and smears her skin with seaweed to knock off the human odor. Elodie makes a rope out of her hair to hold a helmet filled with ash. When all the ash is poured out, the armor falls down and distracts the dragon. Elodie takes advantage of the moment and wakes her sister. However, the dragon quickly realizes that he has been tricked. Elodie decides to tell the truth, that the royal family is conducting a ritual and passing off other people's girls as the king's daughters. But the dragon doesn't believe it and sets Elodie on fire. She falls into the lake and puts out the flames. A battle begins. Elodie is pierced through the dragon's eye and paw. She notices a stream of air, and coming close, the dragon spews flames that fly back at the dragon. The monster can no longer move, and Elodie shows the wound with which the royal family used to make them of the same blood. All this time, the dragon has been killing innocent girls, just like the first king. But the dragon can still get revenge, so Elodie heals the dragon with glowing slugs. Today, there was another wedding at the castle. Elodie has become an intruder. She asks her sister-in-law to flee. Isabel doesn't understand why they should be afraid of her. Elodie replies that it is not her they should fear, but the dragon that will destroy their clan. Now the land will go to Elodie's family and the dragon will protect them. That's the end of the movie. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and leave your comment. See you very soon. Bye.